hey, certainly the metal theologian. This is a little bit spontaneous. So. Now, I actually don't do update videos. I don't have to be like, oh, look at the money I spent. But I actually kind of got a bunch of grails in the mail today. So, I mean, just records. And it's kind of a lot of shit. It's like a lot of Jurgen core. And like, like after I got that shit from Jurgen in the mail, I got really into like... I mean, I, I guess Jurgen core is kind of one of those things I've never really defined, okay? So, as far as the background goes, especially because I'm saying this shit so much... Um, as far as the background goes, it really just started because when Spencer was in town, my older boy, is with the, that pack from Jurgen showed up, and he just sort of went, oh, is that the Jurgen core? So that was kind of, like, and I just thought it was funny, so I started saying that. The part of what made it so funny is that there's the specific, I mean, Jurgen core really kind of evokes a specific type of music, you know? It's like, first of all, German, okay? Then, like, you know, you have your top tier shit, like, you know, your destruction and your creator and your fucking, um, your Halloween, you know? Then you have, like, your second tier shit, like your Holy Moses and your Exumer and shit like that, you know? And then you have your Jurgen core, sort of at the next level down from there, you know what I'm saying? So, uh... Yeah, so... <laughs> he, after geeking out over, like, fucking Mad Butcher and MP records and shit like that, I kind of needed more, so I went a little bit nuts, because there's a dealer in the U.S. who had a few things, so gonna do it but here's the other thing actually I was talking about um, cleaning fingerprints off records with someone the other day and there's this thing that I've been doing for you know this isn't like a gear channel right but this is how I learned to do it in the fucking record store like 30 years ago now and this is still what I do so hopefully this will save you some money and it's way easier than some of the other shit like that fucking shit you spent a lot of money on yeah I just want to hype this record real quick because this actually kind of was a little bit of a grail of mine Mostly because this isn't a really expensive record, but they never turn up for sale in the U.S., you know what I mean? So you always have to basically double the price when you're paying to ship it and that too, so... I was getting a bunch of stuff, so I was like, you know something, man, it's fucking time. I didn't even realize, I'd forgotten how good this is. I've never owned this before, I've listened to it digitally. And it looks so shitty, man. They're called Madison. It's called Diamond Mistress. I mean, look at that. That looks like a fucking glam record, you know? And these guys don't look total glam. But, you know, I'm not exactly seeing any mustaches on there either, you know? They're not exactly giving off the heavy dirtbag vibes. So really, your only clue that this is any good is that it's on Roadrunner, but the fucking Megaforce put out that terrible, shitty profit record, so even that, you know? But this record fucking smokes. Like, there's one ballad on each side, which kind of sounds like what you'd expect it to sound like with the cover. But the rest of it, man, is like this. You know, it's smoking, man. It's a really fucking good record. So, yeah, if you think a band called Madison is likely to suck, well, I'm not going to say your instincts are wrong, because I think they're right. You would just happen to be mistaken, because this record is fucking fantastic. I'm still finally have it. All right, so what I do is, like, I, I'm sure you've seen me do that a thousand times. Just, like, for the day-to-day, -day, like, dusting shit, I just use one of these, like, one of these disc washer things. Probably everyone has one of these. I got this one when I was a senior in high school. So, they last. Um, but, like, to actually get fingerprints off, fucking what I do is I get two just, like, bounty paper towels. You know, like, soft ones. They don't have to be bounty, but, like, you know, you don't want, like, the super scratchy and rough ones and shit. But, yeah, so I just, like, wet this one. It's all rolled up in a ball because you got to wring it out real well, right? And then, shit, how can I show this? Maybe on this arm of the couch here. Basically, I just fold one in thirds inside of the other one. So like that, right? Then fold it into thirds one way. And the other way. And basically, you can sort of control how damp it is by how hard, by squeezing it a little bit. But like one of the records that came in the stack, I was, it's funny, I was actually saving this to demo this for the fucking video. I don't normally do this, but this is like, I don't know, much more into professionalism, maybe. Yeah, this one. I mean, look how shitty this looks. I mean, what a crappy art job, right? It looks like a fucking AOR record, and frankly, for all I know, it is. I've been curious about this one for a long time because it's on No Remorse, and not like the uh, Greek label that's around right now, but like the No Remorse label uh, out of Germany. 
like at the very end of the 80s, early 90s, like the first couple of Blind Guardian records will probably be their uh, biggest claim to fame. But I did a few bangers, like, uh, it's some really good shit by, like, Grinder, and there are a couple of those that are escaping me. So anyway, I've been curious about this record. I'm not really expecting all that much, but um, it also wasn't all that expensive. And I don't know if this is going to show up, but there's showed up, and there's some kind of big fingerprints on there, right? Can you see that shit? Probably not. You can probably just see, like, my kitchen in the reflection. Anyway. Yeah, trust me, there's, there, let's put it this way. I'm not, like, super anal, but these fingerprints were big enough that I was like, yeah, I gotta give that fucking thing a wipe before I, uh, put that on my, uh, record player. So, yeah, man, wipe clockwise. There you go. If you get a little too much water, just give it a second to dry, man. And people worry about, like, minerals in your, in the wa in the tap water that are gonna fuck you up, and, uh... You know, the, the oil from your fingerprints really will build up on your needle. And it won't ruin your needle if you, like, get some shit and, like, clean it off. And that's what I do. The needle will kind of last forever, too, really, if you fucking keep it clean. But, like, um, you know, fucking re microscopic residue in your fucking tap water and shit like that, how that's going to, like, destroy your records and shit. I mean... Like, you hear these things, but I think if you stop and think about them sometimes, they kind of fall apart under just, like, a little bit of scrutiny. Anyway, you know, maybe there's some real science behind that. I'm disinclined to think so, but I suppose anything's possible. Um, what I do know is I've been doing this for 30 years. <sighs> and my records are fucking fine. And when I see someone saying, oh yeah, I have this fucking hundred dollar, like, whatever. I actually tried a spin clean. I got one for like half off at some place. Look at these fucking dirt bags, by the way. We're going to check this one out right now, too. Look, that's fucking... The, the, the mustaches Madison weren't sporting, I think, like, God gave to these two dudes to making theirs twice as thick. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, Madison is awesome. We're going to check out some fucking centaur now. This looks like it's going to be really lame. But you know something? Anyone can talk about good records. It takes an artist to talk about shitty records. Also, shitty records are fucking fun. Aren't they? Yeah. I mean, good records are good. But shitty records are good, too. I'm going to die on this fucking hill. When you're rating records, or generally just sort of assessing shit like this, good and bad are not on opposite ends of a single axis. It's two different axes. <laughs> That's why this record can be shitty as fuck. And still rule. There's no contradiction there. Oh fuck, it's that big. Oh fuck. Oh, there's a huge ass warp in this thing. I thought it felt weird. God damn it. Man, that sucks. Well, I'm bummed, man. Look at this thing. Looks like someone's getting negative feedback. Look at that. That never happens. Oh, well, I'm disappointed, man. Let's see if this thing will track anyway. I don't think it will. My b and is very forgiving, but that is a huge ass warp. I really don't think this is going to play. Cat's fucking bumping the needle. Let's see. You know, this sounds pretty good for how it's tracking. Look at this. Can you see that? That's a hell of a warp, isn't it? Let me teach you a little German. In German, you call that an egg. An I. Yeah, I, I talk about how much I love this PO. I mean, you saw how fucking warped that is. This still sounds pretty fucking good, doesn't it? It's a pretty gradual warp, in fairness. It's not one of those really jarring ones. But... Well, this is a little surprise, man. I was expecting to show, like, a little sort of aside about cleaning records, like a way to get fingerprints off without spending too much money on some bullshit. And so we got a little foray into, uh,.
So, you know, this, I was talking about Jurgen Korb, but you know who would really like this record more? This is a record for fucking Merciful Metal. Yeah, it's tracking. I'm kind of blown away. Like the thing scrapes the needle. The warp is so big that like when it was going around, it would bump the needle up. <laughs> when the needle wasn't actually like lowered onto the record. So. All right, well, that's a bummer. I'll send you an email and see what happens. But, but you know something? I'll tell you something. I'm not going to be a dick about it because it's not, it, wasn't, it didn't cost very much. And there's just no point, you know? Instead, we're going to talk about this one. This is some really great info right here. This is Sacred Cow. I think that's how you say it. Yeah, with ex-members of Living Death. And it's funny because it's sort of like Living Death. But it's kind of not because it's like they got rid of all the, uh, like the sort of darkness and that for just a little bit of goofiness. But this isn't goofy. Like I listened to this a little while ago and it's a pretty good record. So Just four tracks on an EP. Yeah. Let's see what else we got here. Oh yeah, okay, so this is the one that I really associate with Jurgen. I hope y'all are watching Jurgen's channel. It's Jurgen Alman. You can call him Oimo. I'll try to remember to link it below just in case. But a lot of you probably discovered his channel. Yeah, this this record that I'm about to show is really pretty crappy. This is good though, isn't it? You know. It's not like really unique, you know what I mean? It doesn't have, like, magic in it. Except that it's kind of shitty magic, you know what I mean? It maybe doesn't have that kind of magic, but it has the magic of enthusiasm. Which is pretty good, because Living Death had made a few records, so if they weren't burned out, it's good. <coughs> I'd had my eye on this for a while. I thought it looked kind of crappy. But, uh, Jurgen busted it out and started hyping it one day, and I fell for it, so, uh, it's kind of crappy. I mean, it's kind of awesome, too. It's like... Here, what a, what a couplet. First of all, Even Storm attacks the town. They're called Even Storm, right? And then it says, No mercy now for human race. Revenge has taken its place. Bam, look at that. Fuck yeah, man. They're so serious, look at that. It's funny, the thing's backwards, but it, like my camera, it's reversed. But anyway, it's backwards on the back, because they were goofballs. So this record really has some kind of cheese going on, but you know some of this, I still like the songs, dude. And it kind of has that sort of amateur charm. I mean, more than this, really. These guys sound like professionals compared to Even Storm. Now that this is sloppy, the performance is absolutely fine. You know what I mean? This just, um... You, you know... <laughs> They have a special fan club for Iceland. I guess I guess Even Storm was big in Iceland. You see that shit? Fucking Iceland. 450,000 Icelanders can't be wrong, right? Fucking Even Storm fan club. Yeah, it's funny that there are two addresses in Germany, too, man. I'm a little bit baffled by this, you know. Still, this is a pretty silly record, but it's pretty fantastic, you know. If you see it cheap and you're easily amused. So it's funny, I've been listening to a lot of reggae, but most of have been playing this. I've been playing this record, like, every day. And it's funny because I've been listening to, like, half reggae and half metal, and usually when I do, like, a lot of go on a kick, it's one or the other. But I just haven't been able to stop playing this record. Like, today... I think it's the first day in about like a week, maybe 10 days that I haven't played at least once. Like here's another really cool dub record. I suppose it's a little bit average in a way. I don't really have a whole lot to say about this record other than it's just a nice, it's a fun dub record to listen to. It has a pretty fantastic cover. It doesn't have anything to do with heavy metal. <laughs> the name notwithstanding. There's one of these weird ones where it's not even necessarily clear, like, whose, na or, uh, whose name it was recorded under, you know? Because there are a few guys here, but, uh, yeah. This is a Channel One production, though, so yeah, that's kind of what tells me what you get, you know? It's really the Studio One, you know? 
but different. Yeah, I've been listening to Gladiators too. I don't remember if I showed this one or not. It was a little bit of a later one, but uh, it just came kind of uh, not too long ago. This is early 80s. It has a lot more snare drum than the other ones that I've shown, but it's really nice. Man, it's just this band is so easy to listen to. The songs are so good, and they just have that sort of groove, you know. And like they're sloppy enough to sound really authentic and sort of have that down home feel that like the Mighty Diamonds have. I always compare them because I always think of the Mighty Diamonds as one of the more clean bands. You know what I mean? Whereas the Gladiators are kind of sloppy, and Yabby U is really sloppy. You know, which is probably why Yabby U is like my favorite. You know, <laughs> and the Gladiators. Yeah, anyway, I can listen to the fucking Gladiators all day long. And I, well, I was going to say I have, but I don't have enough Gladiators in my record to so. This is another one I've been playing a lot. This is another one of those Lee Perry productions that I kind of clued into late. Like, I was aware of this record as being sort of, you know, considered by people to be important in that, but I didn't really think a whole lot of it. Like, something about the falsetto singing or something just rubbed me the wrong way, but I don't know, man, it's growing on me, and now, like, not only does that not bother me, but like it makes it kind of weird and spooky. Like something that's almost like, yeah, weird. I want to say like banshees or ghosts or something like that, but like I'm not sure if that creates the mental image that I want to convey here, you know? Because it's really just more like this weird sort of, uh, it's just a weird effect, you know? I'm sure a big part of its production, you know, Lee Perry, and this is kind of one of his classic you know, productions, you know? Because, you know, they were like the big albums that he did, but some kind of had a little bit more of him in them than others, and this was definitely on the higher end of the spectrum, you know? Whereas, like, the Heptones record that he did was maybe a little less uh, weird, you know? But maybe I just need to hear that Heptones record again, because I haven't heard it in a long time. But I didn't like it much. But I didn't like the Congos that much either, and I fucking love the Congos. Yeah, I might as well show these Studio One Burning Spears, too. Maybe I've shown these before, but this is kind of the harder one to get. This one seems to get reissued a little bit more often. But this is some really early shit, again, predating his island stuff, and it kind of has that Studio One sound, you know? It's interesting that uh, there is any overlap on the songs, though. You know, you'd expect that... At least I would expect that, you know, if you're going from, like, a local, like, a small Jamaican production to, like... A big one, relatively speaking, in Britain on a bigger label, an island or whatever, you know? That, um, you know, you might repurpose some of your back catalog. I mean, bands do that all the time, you know? I mean, you have your demo and then you have your thing, you know? Not that this is demo quality shit, but it's a lot more, it's a lot lower, it's a much less expensive production, you know? It's great, it sounds fantastic. I mean, these, mu these Studio One productions, I mean, that studio has a reputation for a reason, you know? And in fact, in terms of my personal taste, I mean, yeah, the Black Ark and, you know, the Lee Scratch Prairie Productions, that's pretty much top of the heap. But I'd put Studio One in number two, you know what I mean? Over, like, the Treasure Isle Sound or, you know, Channel One or some of these other studios. I mean, I love all this shit, right? But, like, Studio One was really one of the good ones. Anyway, I would not be surprised if a couple of the album tracks on Marcus Garvey had appeared on one of these fucking records first, but they're not. It's all different stuff. It's like brand new prime Burning Spear shit if you only know the Island Records. And that was kind of how I came to it when I first got into it. Like Marcus Garvey was one of the first records I got really into when I, I got into reggae. And then I found this shit later and I was like, wow, you know. Yeah, and a couple other ones of these. These like, speaking of uh, Studio One, these dub specialist ones. I kind of got these when I was listening to a lot of... Um, Rocksteady a bunch of years ago, but uh, I, I would sort of grab some of these at the same time because I just like the dumb shit and I like the sound, but like, I think I'm going to show them this actually. It has the drums right up in the front. I think I made a joke about that, but uh, it's just really good shit, man. Alright, what else do we have here on the metal front? So I pulled this out, man. I've talked about you're good enough this video, but I like this record more than the other one. I'll just leave it with that. It's a good record. This is the 
this one is kind of a great one for cluelessness, man. This one is like, I think it's like 81 or 82 or something like that. And it's some Italian band that I guess is considered like sort of legendary by people who know more about Italian music than I do. But but the, but the name Vanexa is definitely what I've been aware of for a long time. I just never really bit before, you know. So there's a reissue that turned up relatively cheap, and it's um, I mean it's awesome, man. It's kind of clueless, and that's sort of you know distinctly and uh, pleasantly Italian way. I'll throw it on for a minute, fuck. But um. Yeah, there are like some hard rocky sort of moves in that. And given that I've been really into that sort of new wave of British heavy metal sound a lot, um, relatively recently, this record, um, it doesn't quite scratch that itch, but it definitely is uh, interesting. You know, what, you know what I'm saying? So uh, let's throw this shit on for a minute. It's such a weird cover. What is that, like an ice zeppelin or something? This one, fortunately, doesn't have a huge warp in it. Yes, yeah, so we'll give this one a few seconds, and I'll probably call it. Oh, hey, here's another quick public service announcement, okay? There was the other one, too, but the other, I'd said it was kind of a big pack. There was, like, some stoner shit. I haven't been listening to this kind of shit very much, so I kind of grabbed a few things based on the covers and that, but it was because I had to get it from Poland. So I want to make the shipping worthwhile, right? And why was I going to Poland to get a fucking record? Because fucking this thing is on record now. So I found Ararat 2 when I was uh, really like geeking out over the fucking stoner shit. And that was like one of my very favorite records. In fact, if I had to pick one, it might be the Ararat record. And the Los Natas records are great too. For you guys, like some Argentine guy, like some guy in Argentina like making this fucking record. Anyway, this one had only been on CD. And someone just pressed it on record, and I was like, and I was willing to go to the ends of the earth, so I went to Poland. <laughs> there you go, man. But how fucking cool is it, all right? Like, people say, oh, kids today, they're on their phones and the internet and blah, 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 all this kind of moralizing, that kind of shit, right? Here, it has a little bit of clueless tone. A little hard rocky. But a really cool, like, early sort of primitive metal sound. Fucking love it, man. This is Vanexa. Let me show this again real quick. But yeah, uh, sort of my, my, my parting thought here. How fucking cool is it? Okay, we can all complain about, like, the fucking computers in our lives and shit like that. But how fucking cool is it that I'm sitting in here in the U.S. and I sent away to Poland to get a record by a band from Argentina? And it's fucking right here in my hand right now. That's fucking fantastic, man. I don't care what anyone says, you know? Yeah, there are things that suck about the modern world, but there are some things that are really fucking fantastic, too. So let's try and enjoy those. Now I just need to figure out how to take my own advice, right? Instead of being fucking, like, emo all the time and shit. All right, thanks for watching. I always appreciate it.